the economic issues bubbling up on the floor of the Democratic National Convention. Marketplace Morning Report is supported by Amazon Business, focused on offering smart business buying solutions, leaving time to focus on growth. More at AmazonBusiness.com. And by Palo Alto Networks. Palo Alto Networks delivers what's next in cybersecurity innovation to protect today's digital way of life. Learn more at paloaltonetworks.com. From Marketplace, I'm Sabri Beneshor, in for David Brancaccio. President Joe Biden's victory lap last night included a lot of mentions of how far the economy has come from the depths of pandemic lockdowns and massive job losses. And while there's a lot to celebrate, the nation's mayors have a message for convention goers. Do more about housing affordability, or the lack thereof. Marketplace's Nova Safo has more. The U.S. economy continues to grow, the job market is resilient, and inflation is coming down. Still, many Americans are in a sour mood. The dozens of mayors visiting the Democratic National Convention this week, as they did the Republican one, think there is a winning formula to brighten that mood. At the top of that list is housing. It is the leading issue that American mayors cite when talking about the big challenges facing their cities. Columbus Mayor Andrew Ginther spoke at a news conference as convention goers flowed in and out of meetings. The next administration and Congress must pass the largest and most comprehensive investment legislation in housing in American history. That could be tough as federal deficits and debt grow. To help pay for promises already made, the Harris campaign says the vice president wants to hike the corporate tax rate from its current 21 to 28 percent, partially rolling back Trump-era cuts. There's too much of a burden on, on working people in this country. That's Brandon Johnson, the mayor of Chicago. He says Harris's proposals, like helping first-time home buyers, should cheer voters. The good news is the message already exists. Now we have the messenger, and the people of America will make the right decision, You're and confident? they will elect. Why wouldn't I be? I don't know. I, I, I mean, I have no are, list. There's such economic I, I, malaise. Now look, I've already answered your question, yeah. that the investments that we're talking about is what's going to continue to transform this country. But the final price tag is yet to be tallied. In fact... All of that housing investment the mayors propose, they skirted the question of how much it will cost. In Chicago, I'm Nova Safo for Marketplace. Most of us, apparently, have been putting off some major financial decisions, according to a survey by NerdWallet, because we're waiting for the Federal Reserve to cut interest rates. That could happen as soon as next month. Marketplace's Daniel Ackerman has more. Nearly a quarter of respondents said they plan to buy a car when the Fed cuts rates. Others said they'll open a new credit card or refinance a loan. Laura Veldkamp is a finance professor at Columbia, and she says about all this planning around interest rates. The Fed relies on those kinds of responses. Because it suggests elevated rates are successfully cooling the economy. The survey found Gen Zers and millennials were more likely than older people to make a financial move post-rate cut. Veldkamp says that's because... Younger respondents are more likely to be people who are borrowing, people who are indebted. And rate cuts mean the cost of borrowing will drop, though maybe not dramatically, says Sarah Rathner with NerdWallet. They can happen quite incrementally, a quarter of a percent at a time. And so if you have credit card debt, maybe your debt will go down like 50 bucks for an entire year. Still, Rathner says the survey shows people may soon feel ready for that big financial move they've been putting off lately. I'm Daniel Ackerman for Marketplace. All right, let's do the numbers. Dow futures are pretty much flat, up just three points. S&P futures are up a tenth of a percent. NASDAQ futures are up almost two tenths of a percent. The yield on the 10-year Treasury is 3.883%. Shares of former President Donald Trump's social media company, Trump Media, have fallen to their lowest price since the company started being publicly traded nearly five months ago. The stock closed yesterday down 3.5%. It's lost half of its value since the middle of July. Trump Media is up six tenths percent in pre-market trading today. Marketplace Morning Report is supported by C3 Generative AI. C3 Generative AI enables rapid access to secure, traceable, hallucination-free insights from enterprise systems, all while using any LLM, helping enterprises turn the invisible into the obvious. C3.ai. This is Enterprise AI. And by Schwab, helping people invest in ideas they believe in with Schwab investing themes, with more than 40 themes to choose from. More at schwab.com. 
Artificial intelligence is changing how we predict the weather. NVIDIA's research division published an AI weather model that scientists expect will improve weather forecasting at a regional level for short-term weather events. Marketplace's Elizabeth Troval has more. While scientists around the world are still learning the complex physics of clouds and storms, AI is increasingly helping us fill in some of the blanks. NVIDIA researcher Mike Pritchard. AI is completely changing how we simulate the atmosphere. He says solving physics equations about future weather events is usually done by huge, costly supercomputers. Which limits how high resolution forecasts can be and how many we can make. But now AI is proving to do as good, if not better, a better job than physics equations at similar predictions. And the new research released this week by NVIDIA presents a new model for quickly predicting local weather events, like thunderstorms, down to the kilometer. It certainly does help with the timeliness of information. Maria Molina with the University of Maryland says the machine learning model can compute more efficiently so you can run predictions more often. And compared to supercomputers used by richer countries, once machine learning models are trained, they are much cheaper to run, and that is what opens doors for access. Access for countries with fewer resources to predict severe weather events like derechos and hurricanes. Technologist Pitak Mitra says this is a step towards... A very, very accurate weather forecast, a kilometer scale weather forecast across the world, which will be game changing in terms of saving lives, like, you know, predicting rot sooner, predicting heat waves sooner, predicting cold snaps sooner which could make better use of disaster response resources. Studies like this or techniques like this would open up a lot of opportunities where the relief could be sent to the right place at the right time, you know, beforehand instead of just spreading it too far, too thin. Andy says down the road, we could see storm warning systems improve in different parts of the world. I'm Elizabeth Troval for Marketplace. And in New York, I'm Sabri Beneshore with the Marketplace Morning Report. From APM American Public Media.